Hi there, dance studio owners, and welcome to a brand new series of the Transform My Dance Studio podcast. Over the coming weeks, we are delighted to be joined by DSOA Dance Studio Growth Coach, Shannon Westbeer. During this six-week special of Transform My Dance Studio, join Shannon in the Coach's Corner as she workshops innovative ideas and solutions around growing the dance studio of your dreams while getting your life back. We hope you enjoy today's special episode. And make sure to join our free Facebook group, the Dance Studio Owners Association, for more resources and support in growing the dance studio of your dreams. Hello, dance world. It's me again, Shannon Westfear, training and coaching manager of the DSOA. I can't believe that we are already in week five of my podcast, taking you back to the basics. I hope that you had your morning cup of coffee because I need you on your A game when listening to what I'm going to talk to you about today. I'm diving into culture, your vision, mission, and core values, the guts of your organization, the story behind who you really are. It is truly what the outside world thinks about you and your studio. It's the first few words that an employee tells a good friend about their job and what it's like to work for you. Connected, motivating, nurturing, progressive, fun, challenging. What words define your studio at its core? I get excited about this topic, maybe partially because I'm sensitive to it. What are people saying about the one thing I've worked so hard to develop? Much of this goes back to what I spoke to you about last week, team and leadership. It starts there. The net result of how successful you are in the development of your team from the leadership you provide helps to create and define your culture. At companies with a welcoming culture, employees are friendly, more likely to build internal employee networks and plan team events to spend time with coworkers outside of the studio. Remember that your onboarding process will be the first impression employees have of your company, and it has the potential for really setting them up for success. I'll give you a quick example of this with a company you all know. Know well, Netflix. They are nothing short of a revolution in the entertainment industry, generating billions of dollars in revenue while capturing the imaginations of hundreds of millions of people. But to get to where they are now, they had to reinvent themselves over and over and over again. This type of unprecedented flexibility would have been impossible without the radical management principles of their team. Simply put, if they would not have adjusted and readjusted their vision many times over a fairly short period of time, they would not be in business today. Their CEO rejected the conventional wisdom under which other companies operate and defied tradition to instead build a culture focused on freedom and responsibility. One that has allowed Netflix to adapt and innovate as the needs of its members and the world have simultaneously transformed. That team set new standards, valuing people over the perception of required process, emphasizing and awarding innovation over efficiency, and giving employees context, not controls. This was one of the first major companies where there was no vacation or expense policies. They had a culture where employees were motivated not to please their boss, but to give candid feedback instead. Because they were willing to take risks and not follow the standard way in which businesses at the time were managing their employees, they attracted awesome talent. They were considered out of the box by most at that time. And because of that, Netflix quickly became one of the most loved brands in the world. It wasn't because their product was different, because others were launching similar services. It was because of their culture and their unwillingness to lose the very best people in the industry. When your team truly becomes unified, you'll know it. Think hard about this. Is there collaboration as one team within your studio, or are you considered the only shot caller? Can your employees say anything in an effort to move the business forward without you being offended, without them being reprimanded? If not, you're not a team yet. And one last thing while I'm talking about it, always celebrate your achievements with your team first, then shout them out from the rooftops for your clients to hear. Your team is always first to know when things go wrong. 
They should be there by your side as you celebrate accomplishments too. They were part of the process. Team, make them part of your vision, mission, and core values. Do you remember back in the early 2000s when Google was in its infancy? I was working in the corporate world at the time and found myself so intrigued about how they defined culture within their mega office campuses that were coming online throughout the country. Free food, state-of-the-art nap pods, video game stations, childcare, and of course, the infamous slides to get from one place to the next. Yes, all of that sounds amazing in an effort to keep employees happy, to make their workday go by faster, easier, better, but it's much deeper than that. It wasn't just about attracting talent for them. See, the tangible things in reality are nothing more than an investment stacked behind Google's mission, which ultimately defines their culture. Encouraging creativity, hiring deliberately for character and skill, open communication policies that never penalize for asking the wrong question. This all communicates your core values clearly. Sounds like the kind of place you would want to work at, right? Well, let me tell you, now more than ever, it has been shown that the millennial generation, you know, those 25 to 40 year olds account for more than a third of all American workforce participants. And that applies 10 times over in an industry like ours. They are comfortable with new technology. In fact, they thrive on it. They want collaboration. And like all of us, they desire a sense of purpose. Millennials are particularly interested in working for companies with a well-defined mission and set of values. They want to understand your business with just a few words. Remember this as we continue our discussion today. They want flexibility, career development, healthcare, student loan assistance, and opportunities to give back. Sounds a lot like what Google had going on before this generation even entered the workforce, right? To manage your employees, focus on output, embrace more autonomy, and provide educational opportunities whenever you're able. And always commit to providing an opportunity for your employees to give back to the community. This may seem like a lot to think about, but if I can give you one piece of advice, one thing that you take from this session that generalizes all of this, it would be don't be the same studio as the old school one you grew up in. People who you surround yourself by now are likely much different, with different life goals as those individuals that a studio owner surrounded themselves by 10, 20, or 30 years ago. Now, of course, you likely have fond memories of your first dance studio experience and the lovely Miss Priscilla as your teacher. What I mean by all of this is, as a business owner, are you doing more now than just offering classes and end-of-the-year recitals? Are you different from what we defined a dance studio as in 1995? Could you tell me what that studio's mission was back then? And did you walk away from that experience, believing in that mission and then providing you with that brand promise? Your answer might be yes, which is great. But for most of you, it's probably no. I can tell you that the studio I attended during high school did not have a vision mission or core values. Or should I say at a minimum, they failed at least in portraying this onto their students, parents, and teachers. Do me a favor, close your eyes just for a quick moment and think about how you feel when you walk into a Target, into a Whole Foods, your hair salon, or your favorite yoga studio. Those feelings that you have are all part of that company's culture and marketing plan. The colors, the smell, the first time you come into contact with an employee. The efficiencies, systems, it's all part of how you compare that business to its competition. Microsoft, a computer on every desk and in every home. Disney, to entertain, inform, and inspire people around the globe through the power of unparalleled storytelling. Teach for America. One day, all children in this nation will have the opportunity to attain an excellent education. It's aspirational, telling, 
just a few words, and I know exactly what this business means today and what their focus is tomorrow. Start the process yourself. If you had to write down on one piece of paper how you think your parents and your students feel when they walk into your studio, what would that be? This is actually one of the exercises that DSOA members do as part of each studio's three-year vision. It's a way to think about all of the various parts of your studio from the moment a client walks through the door until the time that they leave. This is also a really good exercise to have your employees do, or even as part of your hiring process. I love asking that question when I interview someone I've never met before. What do you think about this place? Be honest with me. Give me three words that define your first thoughts when you walked through the front door. I know, I know. They're probably lying to me to get the job, but but I do it anyways. It's important to be reminded by a person with fresh eyes on how they see your business. Sometimes with honesty, you get some amazing ideas for when it's time to pivot and when it's time to make a change. I remember going through this exercise years back with an employee and when asked the question, having them tell me that they thought we were cluttered. I recall reacting quite negatively, not understanding why they would think that. Cluttered? Do you mean we're disorganized? I remember saying out loud. Cluttered? Like we don't have a clear path forward, we don't have a vision. All of a sudden, I was put into this defensive posture. I recalled hating what I had just heard. What do you mean we're cluttered, I said. She responded saying, no, Shannon, I just mean the basement and the back room are horribly disorganized. When I bring people back there, I feel as though it's a representation of who we are. I don't like that. We need to be organized with everything that we do, not just with our students, not just with our communication and our scheduling, with everything. I will be put on record as saying that more than anything. I rewarded honesty, and that's just what it was. Well, guess what happened that next weekend? Those rooms were spotless. It is easy to get set in your ways and just continue running day in and day out without even stopping to think, wow, how long has that old sign been hanging there? Or I never knew we had a small crack in our front window. Just another example of a team being bigger and better than just one person. We had a parent years back that had been at the studio with her daughter for about 12 years. She had been with us from the very beginning and had supported us through our growing pains. She was a great dance mom, the kind of person that was grounded, humble, loving, and always there for her daughter in the most positive way. She approached our studio manager one day and said, I know that you all have asked for my feedback several times over the last couple of years, and we have always worked well together. And I'm starting to feel like things are getting left behind and I would love to help you. My studio manager went on to listen to her and left the conversation telling her, let me talk to Shannon and I'll get back to you. When my studio manager came to me, she told me the story and then proceeded to say, this mom offered to look at our studio with fresh eyes. She spent the time. She is vested in our success. I think instinctively people at times take this type of constructive criticism as, well, I failed. Here's a customer that is hinting at areas of weakness. Well, we didn't. We took her up on her offer and she met with my studio manager the very next week to do a thorough walkthrough of our studio space while providing a ton of feedback on our systems and our communication process. This might not seem like something that every studio owner would wish upon themselves, but it was one of the most powerful things she could have done for us. This mom was not demanding that we fix things or, or else. She simply saw an opportunity to help us. Now that list ended up quite long and we could not make all of the suggested changes right away. But we started with the little things and slowly went down the list over the next couple of months. We then budgeted for the larger repairs, taking everything into consideration. Clients started noticing, as did the mom right away. They weren't always able to put their fingers on it, but they knew that things seemed fresh and in a new way. 
I was so thankful for that mom and her willingness to be open and honest. I was also quick to thank my team member. I reminded her that we didn't fail. Nobody failed. We simply got better. So how do you find your vision, mission, and core values? Or if you already have them, how often do you revise or bring them back to life? My first suggestion is that you involve your staff and even some of your longtime parents. Create an advisory board if being formal helps you maintain the process. You, as the owner of your business, need to take lead with what will be the foundation of your vision and your mission, but your staff and clients can also tell you how they see from their perspective. Living through it with parents seeing firsthand how dancers come home after being involved in it for hours each week. Books can guide you. Coaching calls can give you a clearer path. But most of what will be your values, most of what will end up being your mission statement, has to come from your heart. Why did you begin this journey? What do you expect from your employees? When one of your students comes back to see you 10 years later, 20 years later, what do you want them to say to you? How did you change them for the better? Having clear company values helps to ensure that all of your employees are working towards the same goals. Your core values support the company's vision and shape its culture. That's why every single business decision should be aligned with these values. In my opinion, a business without core values isn't really a business. How can you build great teams, deliver on excellent customer service, and foster innovation if you haven't defined and shared your company values with your employees? How will they ever know what they need to do in an effort to drive the business forward? I always use the analogy of a rowing team. They're in sync. They move together as one team. They're always on the same page. And without one of them, just a single one of them, they'll never get first place. Creating and subsequently updating your company mission statement and values means reconfiguring the guiding philosophy of your organization. It's a huge project that will require effort from everyone at your studio. Everyone needs to be bought in, but the project itself is an amazing learning experience. You'll get to discover what matters to your people and, well, what's more exciting than that? Make your values visual. Once defined, publish and promote them on your company website and within your employee handbook. Write them on your walls. Higher or not, based on your values. Talk about them in employee training. Remind people around you when they have taken action that is contradictory to what you stand for. Consistently communicate them. Wake up and repeat. All of this energy, all of this time, all of this effort, what are you left with? Well, Now you have a culture that you can be proud of. Thank you for coming along on this journey. There is nothing that is more important than establishing a culture. There is nothing more gratifying than bringing people up. And establishing and being proud of a group of individuals that can take your business to the next level. On behalf of the DSOA and the dance world that defines us, see you next week. We hope you enjoyed today's episode, the Transform My Dance Studio podcast. Don't forget to join us over in the Dance Studio Owners Association Facebook group for more resources and support in growing the dance studio of your dreams while reclaiming your life.